He touched me and made me whole. Brothers and sisters, the testimony and the confession you are about to hear now is from one of our brothers, Shaibu, a former Boko Haram member. God arrested him and now he's born again. Listen and be blessed. Except the God of Christians, that is the merciful God, a God of forgiveness, is the only God that can forgive someone like me. Is the only God that we have mercy on people like me. If not him, no any other God that will give me a free access to come into his presence because of the wickedness that I did in my life. But believe you me, it's not all about me. It's about the strong man in me that I am working for him. That is the Satan. We keep on doing all manner of wickedness in the state. At times when we kill, if policemen arrest us, we start arguing with them that you are wasting your time to take people like us to station. Later, if you take us, we will not spend 15 to 30 minutes, we will come out. If you are doubting, took us to station. At times, immediately as we are, step, we are stepping, like they are waiting for us, they will just give order to release us. For you to know how connected we are in the state. And the Quran says, if you don't have money to support the jihad, if you don't have power to fight jihad, those that are fighting jihad, sell the last drop of your blood, if you can, and support them to fight a jihad. By doing that, you will have a portion in the kingdom of Allah. All the rich men in the north, they are contributing to what we are doing for the sake of religion, in the name of religion. All those that are in position, the governors, the traditional rulers, they are in support of what we are doing. It is written from the Quran whether they like it or not. And the prophet says, he know that they like it, but what they dislike, that is what their God like it. So if they want to follow him, they must involve in jihad. And jihad is mandated to any Muslim. We keep on doing that. 2003, I remember, we are in the camp with my guys sitting down. Our leaders came with military uniform. When he came with that, he asked us to prepare ourselves. We are going to Jos to go and fight the Christians in the Jos. They are killing our brothers. And we dress up like a military man with these guys. God have mercy. The military men in Jos, among them, there are those that we are connected with them. They are part of us. They are even support what we are doing. So when we go to a certain place like this, they will give us a direction or a signal that they are leaving this such compound. So immediately as they leave, we should advance. Brethren, when we go to a certain compound like this, we will start firing. If you come out, you die. If you didn't come out, we burn you in your house. There is no one will survive it. Look at the wickedness. It reached a level that when we know that in that community is mixed up with Muslim, when we get to a certain house like this, we will speak to them in the Arab tongue. We will tell them, Sallu Allah Nabi Ul Karim. If they didn't respond, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we realize that they are Christians. And the instructions say, even a shocking breast baby, silent her. A, a pagan is a pagan. No matter how he grow to become a Christian, he will never forget his past. It's only God that we have mercy. After that, 2009,
count from 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2006, 7, 8, 9. How many souls we wasted? We waste souls uncountable. The only killing that I kill, I feel like I kill someone or I feel the pain. They brought three of my department ladies. I'm watching a movie in the camp. Immediately when I saw them, I turned my face to the other side because they are nice to me. When I turned my, back, my face at the other side, not knowing that my leader is looking, is focusing through my, towards my direction. When he came, he said, Shwaib. I said, sir, did you know these ladies? I told him that they are my department ladies. He said, Shwaib, go and kill them in the name of Allah. As I'm approaching them, they are smiling at me. I'm smiling, but it's not an ordinary smile. When I get there, that is how I wasted them. Immediately as I turned, my leader shouted, Allah is great. And I respond, Allah is great. I forget that I killed someone. I went ahead and sat down. 2009, we are in the camp. So we lost one of our colleagues. On the process of taking him to the graveyard, our, our brothers, they met with the military police in the town. The military, sorry, the militaries and the Mopos, that they are doing patrol in their state. They stopped them because they didn't put a helmet on their head. And the constitution says anyone that will ride a machine within the state, he will put helmet on his head. But them, they didn't. So the challenge, they start challenging each other. Some of them, they, they tried to collect the rifle from the military mains. Immediately at the spot, the military mains killed seven and they injured 21. After doing that, we had the information that our brothers are fighting the military mains. When we rush to that particular place, we want to create awareness. So our leader asked us not to demonstrate anything. Let's took the one that they died to the grave and the one that they injured to hospital. We do according to what he tell us to do. I even contrib I even donate blood to my brother that was be shot with a gun. After that, we decide to declare a holy war in the state entirely. We started on Sunday. We went to the police headquarters. When the police are lying down in a north during the whole season, people sleep outside. They don't sleep inside. We meet the police on duty. We slide all of them. None of them survive it. We went to the prison. We break the prison. We kill all the Christians. We set all the Muslims free. We went ahead and burned police stations. Uncountable. Some of us went to the Christian's home. They took the Christian from their home to the Boko Haram camp straight. We burned 14 churches that Sunday. So when we come to the camp, we saw the camp loaded with people. When we asked, who are these people? They told us that they are Christians. Then our leader asked us to kill them in a line. We kill them in a straight line. We are asking them one after the other. Did you believe in Jesus? Then we said, no, I didn't believe in Jesus. Did you believe on Prophet Muhammad? Yes, we believe on Prophet Muhammad. Did you believe what we are doing? We are doing the right thing. Yes, you people are doing the right thing. Deny Jesus that Jesus is not a son of God. Jesus is not a son of God. Jesus is a servant of Allah. Jesus is a servant of Allah. We put them aside. Those that they didn't deny Jesus, we asked them, did you want to die with your Jesus? They will say, yes, we want to die with our Jesus. Hardly when you count 10 people, latest is only two people will stand for Jesus. The remaining eight will deny Jesus, thinking that they will be rescued. After the separation, we want to rush those that they didn't deny Jesus. Our leader asks us not to do that. He says to us that those that they stand for Jesus, he don't want their Jesus to ask their blood upon us. Let's send them out of the camp to live. But those that they deny Jesus, even if they are Muslims, when they find themselves in the hands of the Christians, they will deny the faith of Islam. Let's silence all of them. 
Those that they denied Jesus, we kill all of them. But those that they didn't deny Jesus, they were set free. They left the camp. I traveled to my hometown. Before I come, I heard that the Mopos and the soldiers break into the camp, they kill our leader. That is where all of us gather together. We vow that in this country, we don't want to see police with eyes, except the policemen will kill us or else we will kill them. As we vow because they kill our leaders. And the governor of the state that, that instruct them to kill the leader, we want the government, the federal government, and we hang with the governor. Immediately when they hold him, they will exploit. They have already signed for that. That is the reason that you see up to date Boko Haram's in not. They are like a vampire sucking blood anywhere they find they are safe. The greatest target is Christians. But along the line, the secret behind Boko Haram is exposed according to the according to the according to the target of al-qaeda boko haram are not yet to be had in the country it's just that god exposed the secret when the journey started the way we was asked to we will capture all the states in the country equipped all the youth poison their mind with charms with money with weapons but when the real day we come we will invite the people from outside to come and join us and fight the christians and the government if we succeed in killing them then we will put our government in the country that is the aim of al-qaeda that boko haram will march as a soldiers then islam will take over the nation onto what they decide but god exposes it Brethren, Christians, if you are a Christian, genuine Christian, I congratulate you this morning. Except you are not a dedicated, genuine Christian. Still 2009, November, I traveled to my local government. I met a sister. She dressed like a Muslim. I excused her. When I excuse her, we introduce ourselves. I start having a word with her. This sister starts preaching Jesus to me. I look into her eyes. With all the powers in me, this lady has that boldness to talk about Jesus to me. I still look into her four eyes. She keep on preaching the Jesus. Then I tell her to look into my face. Did I look like a pagan that she will preach Jesus to me? She said, no, she is not a pagan, she is a Christian. And I asked her, what is the difference between Christian and pagan? She said, the difference is far, is far, she cannot compare it. Right from my childhood, I was told that Christians are pagan. I didn't know anything about Christians, except Jesus is their God. That's all. If you see them, kill them. If they see you, they will kill you. This is how I got my orientation concerning Christians. Immediately, when, we, when the conversation ended in pieces, she left. When she left, I came back. I picked the sand that she stepped with her feet on. I took it to some of the Islam teachers, that is the Malans. They pray about it, that I want them to touch her memory anywhere she is. She will not have peace of mind until she finds where am I. And that thing is used to happen. When we did it, we so much believe on it. So when I took it to the first Baba, he asked me to stay away from the lady. I asked him why he didn't respond. The second one dissenting, the third one dissenting. When I have a meeting in the state capital with my colleagues, I travel. I went straight to the state Imam. He's the man that when we are going for a mission, he sacrificed for us. When I met him, when he saw me, he said, Shwaib, how can I help you? I said, sir, there is a lady that challenged me, and she's a pagan. He asked me, did she know me? I said, no, she didn't. So what did I want him to do? 
And I told him to turn her head any way she is. She will not find peace of mind until she seek for me. That I will wicked her. He asked me to come with a calabash. I brought the calabash to him. He, he asked me to bring a water in a cattle and a slate. He wrote some Quranic verse on it. He put the water in a calabash. And he put the water in his mouth and recited some Quranic verses. After doing that, he put the water in a calabash and called the name of the lady. The lady was bearing Elizabeth. He called her name three times. Elizabeth didn't appear. He called the name of some Muslims that he knew. They appear. He called the name of some Christians. They appear. But that lady refused to appear. He said, wife, stay away from this lady. She's a born again. I said, sir, this lady, she didn't born. I was thinking that the meaning of born again, when someone gives birth for the first time, the second time is born again. Not knowing that it's something different. He said, Shwaib, born again means someone that has dedicated himself to his God. For the person to, add, to appear, his God will not allow the person to appear. Stay away from her. If chief imam will tell me to stay away from her, I see no reason why will I go after her anymore. I forget her chapter. To my surprise, December 23, I just received a call. I respond, Salamu Alaikum, who am I speaking with? She says, Shwaib, can you remember Elizabeth, the lady that you called her pagan the other time? I say, oh, sorry, it's a slip of a tongue. I didn't mean to call you pagan. Where are you? Say, Shwaib, I want to invite you to my house. Can you make it? I say, why not? She takes me the address of their house. She give me time. I'm happy. Thinking that all the chance that I did, they didn't work. It's now that they start functioning against her. If she will seek for my number and call me, that means the spirit of Allah has already turned her head against me. Not knowing that there is a different plan ahead of me waiting there. I prepare myself. I nice up. When I get to their house, she came out and embraced me. I recite a verse in the Quran. I say it, Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'un. When someone die, you will recite that verse to him. Or when you have in mind to kill that person, you consider him as a dead person, so you will recite that verse. If there are Muslim brothers around, they will understand what you mean. So when I say that, we sat down together with her. She apologized and I accept her apology. I did the same thing. We have a nice time with her. She asked me for a, she asked me, she make a request. Shwai, please, can you do me a favor? I say, Elizabeth, what a favor you want me to do for you? She says, Shwai, please, promise me before I say it. I insist she should say it, but she insists until I promise her. Then I promise whatever she asks me to do, I will do, I will do for her. My mind went to something different, thinking that she would ask me something in a negative way. She said, Shwai, we were taught in our church to invite our best friend for Christmas Carol VG. I just feel like someone has stabbed me with a knife in my heart. I feel the pains of the world she mentioned, church. Immediately a verse dropped in my heart. Says, Kul ya hai wa liqafirun, la an buduna tabudu wa ma antun abiduna ma abud. Wala na antun abiduna ma abud. La kundini kum wa I am not a pagan. I will not worship what you are worshipping. Neither you worship what I'm worshipping. Why will you invite me to church? Immediately when that verse came, she take me out of my mood. Say, Shwaib, can't you respond as you promised? Then I asked her, when the program will start? She said, Shwaib, the program will start by 10, but I want us to be in the church by 9.30. Say, okay, I will be in the church. Immediately, I lied to her. I called a friend. I taught him that the key is with me, I'm going. In order to use that as an excuse to left her presence because she take me out of my mood. When I left, I'm going. Then the spirit taught me, Shwaib, this lady didn't know who you are. If she knows, she will not invite you to the church. I say, yes, she don't know. If she knows, she will not invite me to the church. Shwaib, 
Oh, she wants you to burn their church. I said, maybe she wants me to burn their church. Oh, she wants me to kill her. I kill many like her and I burn many of their churches. So maybe she is inviting me to the church to go and burn the church. When I got home, I lie down. I am I'm receiving a lot of thought into my mind. The first thought that came said, Shwaib, you was warned not to enter into church when you are born in churches. I said, yes. Why did they say that? Because the God of the Christian is very powerful. When he sees you unto what he decides for you, you have no decision on your own. Then another word came, Shwaib, why can't you go and see the God that these people are worshiping? If you come back, you organize your boys to go and burn that church. I say, yes, I got the idea. I will go to that church and see the God that the Christians are worshiping. If I come back, I will organize my boys to go and burn the church. My plan has succeeded. The following day, when the time reached, I put all the charms in my body, even the one I don't use, I put it in my body. I put my weapons in my waist. I pray in my room before I went out. As I'm going and reciting some Quranic verses that will give me a boldness that Allah should protect me against the God of the Christians. When I got to their house, she saw me, she came out. She is happy. We start going to church with her. When we go to the church, my first time in life to step into the church, that is on 24 December 2009. Before I step into the church, I recite some Quranic verses that Allah should give me protection, should protect me against the God of the Christians. No matter what the Christians and their God have a plan against me, let Allah stand for me. As I step into the church, I saw this lady, she just kneeled down and closed her eyes. I'm looking at what she's doing. I asked her, what did you do? She said, Shwaib, I pray to my God. This is the way you are praying to your God. She smiled. I saw people dancing, clapping their hands, waving, demonstrating many things in the church. I feel pity for them. I say, may Allah have mercy on these people. This is not the way to worship Allah. The lady asked me to stood up and dance in the church. I said, no, in my mind, I cannot dance to your God. So after they finished that praises, the choir sang their song. After the choir, then the youth of the church, they acted two different drama. The first drama, the way Christians are collecting credit during Christmas, they cannot able to pay it, they will, they will they will bring police to them. The second one, the way Muslims are burning churches, killing Christians. I just turn around, I look at the face of the lady, and her face didn't speak about the drama. I just say to myself, this lady didn't know that I involved in killing and burning. But what is the meaning of this drama? Did they know that I am one of those that are killing Christians and burning churches? No wonder we was one not to come to the church. Maybe they are Allah, sorry, they are God, start demonstrating that I should know that He's powerful. After all, Allah is greater than their God. One of the youth came out and says, upon all what the Muslims are doing to the Christians, if they repent and receive Jesus to be their Lord and Savior, God will have mercy on them. When I'm peeping in the church to see the God that Christians are worshiping, I saw puppet like this. And the, with the, at the pulpit, there is a cross. Uh -uh. I said, this is the God that these people are worshipping. Because everybody was facing it the way we are facing it. I concluded that in my mind, this is the God of the Christians. Later, tomorrow, I will come and burn you and burn all the churches. That's what I keep on saying in my mind. So when he said, their God, we have mercy on us. I look at their God. I said, this God that I'm seeing, Except Allah, we have mercy on this God, but your God will not have mercy on me. I got that boldness. When they invite the man of God to the altar, all the church stood up, and I did it. They asked me to, and I refused, because I cannot stand for a pagan. I call him a pagan because he's not a Muslim. 
They sing a song, do something new in my life. When they are singing the song, I saw the fashion of singing that praises in their faces. And the way they demonstrate it with all of their heart, I sat carrying away by the song. When I'm singing the song, I realize that I'm not belong to them. I start saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive me, may Allah forgive me. After that, the man of God asked them to sit down. After the sermon, the man of God called people to pray for them by laying hand on their forehead. I saw some people are falling down. I touched the lady. I said, Elizabeth, is it another drama again? She said, no, it's not a drama. It's the power of the Holy Spirit is in the church. I asked her, where is the Holy Spirit? She told me that the Holy Spirit is invisible. But if I want to know about Holy Spirit, if we are going home, she would tell me about him. I didn't say a word. Then the man of God invited the youth, student, to lay his hand on them. This lady just hold my hand in the church. I start following her. I was thinking that the program is over. We are not going back on the way we enter. That's how I concluded in my mind. She took me straight to the goat of to the sorry to the pulpit. I stand before the pulpit because I concluded that this is the goat of the Christian. My body starts shaking. Then I start reciting some verses that will give me a boldness to stand before the God. But all what I'm seeing, maybe the God will just hold me, will demonstrate to fight me, but I'm alert. Looking at the way the puppet will react to me. Then I told her, I said, why did you bring me before your God? She said, Shwai, I want my pastor to pray for you. Did I need your prayers? She said, no, our prayer has nothing to do with your religion. I say, after all, Allah is great. I'm looking. Before the man of God will lay his hand on me, I concluded in my mind that when he put his hand on my forehead, I will not close my eyes and I will pray as a Muslim. When he came, he lay his hand. He said, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I say it my own. Wa inna hu sulaiman, wa inna hu bismillah, a'uzu billahi min shaitani rezim. He's praying, I'm praying, he's praying, I'm praying. I don't know the time that I fall in the church. When I fall in the church, the chance in my body exposed. The weapon exposed because I didn't fall in my senses to cover it. They took me to an office at the side of the church. I saw some group of people surround me. They are throwing something in my body. <laughs> when I wake up, I remember, I realize that I'm not in the church. I mean somewhere else. Then the spirit told me, Shwaib, they want to kill you, but I protect you. Immediately I stood up, I touched my weapons. None of them temper with it. I hold it. The man standing before me, I hold him. I asked him, what is going on here? He said, sorry, brother, we want to pray for you. I said, I'm not a kafirun. I'm not a Christian. I'm a Muslim. Sorry, we want, I said, I don't need your prayer. I pushed the man. I walk out of that place. When I walk out of that place, I decide to leave the church premises. I went outside. I intend going home, but something asked me to call this lady and tell her the mistake she make. That next she will not try it to someone else. When I call on her, she came out. I said, this is the reason why you invite me to church. So that your brothers will kill me. You didn't succeed. She said, Shwai, that is not the reason why I invite you to church. I said, no, you don't know who am I. Excuse me. If you know, you will not start it. She said, Shwaib, I don't want to know who you are, but that is not the reason why I invite you to the church. I told her that I'm going home. She said, the program is over. Let her pick her Bible as long as we come together. She got into the church. She picked her Bible. We are going home. She is apologizing. I didn't say a word to her. When we get to a certain place that the place is quiet, nobody, then the spirit told me, Shwaib, strike this lady to death and i answer i would do it immediately i'm thinking of if i could use the pistol it would sound because everywhere is quiet why wouldn't i use the knife and the knife is very spiritual if you prick someone body the demons attached to that they are the one to finish the race your own is just to bring a blood in that person's body i just put hand on the knife 
I want to remove the knife. I just feel a power. Like someone prays my hand. I'm trying to struggle with that. I cannot. I'm trying. I cannot. I just feel my hand become weak. I leave it. The spirit will say, Shwife, strike her. I will hold it. I try it three times. I cannot remove the knife. My hand will be weak. I turn around and look into her face. I ask her, who are you? She says she's a daughter of God. I say, may Allah forbid, you will never be a daughter of God. The Quran says, Kul wallahu ahad, Allah has no father, no mother, no wife, brother or sister, neither son or daughter. Why will you tell me that you, you are a daughter of Allah? Don't repeat it. She says, Shwai, if I'm serving a living God, I will pray for you, you will become, you will be, become a Christian. I said, look at the person who pray for me to be a Christian. May Allah forbid, may be, I will be the one to pray for you to become a Muslim. When we get to the point that we will depart, she left and I went to my house. When I got home, it's late. Almost time to pray in the mosque. I went to the room straight, I lay down. After I put my head down, I start sleeping. I just had a knock. My dad come to wake me to go and call a prayer in the mosque. He's the imam of the mosque. So I'm the one calling the prayer in the mosque. So when he came, I'm weak. My eyes are heavy. I told him that I will meet him in the mosque. When I didn't go, I heard someone was calling the prayers. So I used that one as an advantage. I just slept. When I slept, I just find myself in a church. I start singing praises. I saw people in the church. When they came, we praised God together with them. After that, I asked them to sit down and they did. I took a chair and sat down at the side of the pulpit. I start saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then I asked myself, who is that Father? Who is that Holy Spirit? But Jesus, I know, is the God of the Christian. I'm in that confusion, asking myself. Then I saw seven people came to me. They asked me to pray for them. I told them, did I look like a pagan that you will ask me to pray for you? They said, Shwai, our God will put his word in your mouth that you can pray for us. I challenged them, if your God is capable of doing that, I see no reason why I will not pray for you. They asked me to stand up, and I do. Immediately, I lay my hand on his head. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't know the remaining prayer that I pray. I saw the man fall. Out of the seven, it's only two people. They didn't fall down. I see the five on the floor. I start went back. I start saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Those people, they took them to the same place that they took me in the first stage when I fall in the church. After some times, they came into the church. They said they want to testify to the glory of God. I'm sick, bro. Shall I pray for me? I receive my healing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I said, excuse me. Before you say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is the word I keep on saying since. Who is that Father? And who is that Holy Spirit? And I know Jesus is your God. When the man wants to explain, I just wake up from that dream. I rebuke the dream in my religion way. I still slept. The same dream repeat himself. I wake up. The day has break. I went to my mommy's room. I greet her. Hajja, salamu alaikum. My last born, where have you been yesterday? Your diet was troubling me. I say, mommy, I'm with a friend. When it's late, I didn't come back home. I passed the night with him. She asked me not to repeat it. I use that as an excuse because I cannot mention in my house that I went to church. And I cannot tell anybody because I will face the coincy coincy. But then they don't know the reason why I go to that church. In my mind, if I go there, I see the God of the Christians, I will come and organize my boys to go and burn the church. That is the reason why I went to that church. After that, I went out to meet my friends to have a nice time with them. I'm together with my friends. A time of prayer approached. We did ablution together with them. We stand in a mosque. We key up for prayers. 
for me to start saying astaghfirullah astaghfirullah allahu akbar allahu akbar ashhadu an la ilaha illallah for me to recite on those quranic verses i start saying thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit i can see everybody was looking into my face but as for me i'm offering the word of prayers the way i normally do but not knowing that is something different is coming out of my mouth when i saw my friends are bowing down to allah as i want to bow down the cross that i saw in the church it is shining before me very bright that i cannot put my head on it i start asking allah to forgive me. immediately all those thoughts that i was warned not to go to church has came into my memory i'm confused i don't know whether my friends see what i saw and the quran says once if you are praying if you got confused you should not continue with those prayers you will stop where you find yourself and i sat down i didn't continue all what i'm saying may allah forgive me may allah forgive me after the prayers i went out when i went out my friends start asking me shwaib are you out of your sins do you know what you are saying what's wrong with you i told them that i take it beyond what i can control i lie to them i smoke in their head i take hard drugs i take injection i sniff heroin i smoke i do many things in order to take me out of my senses when i'm going for a mission at times i don't know the time that i am in my senses at all the time i'm out of my senses but that day i didn't take anything i am in my senses i know when i went home i took my bath i'm just thinking that i'm not holy so when i took my bath i did ablution i stand in my room to pray that is where i got to hear what i'm saying thank you father thank you jesus thank you holy spirit i want to bow down the same cross that i saw in the mosque he followed me to my room i'm confused if i find myself in the mix of my friends i'm feeling bad when i had the time of prayer approach because i cannot pray i would just use that advantage and excuse myself to go somewhere else and wash my leg my hands my feet to pretend like i pray in the other side when this thing keep on disturbing me i see no reason why will i hide it from my mom i just went to her i say haji assalamu alaikum say my last one how can i help you i say mommy the last time i lied to you that i'm together with my friend i passed the night with him she said yes i say mommy i'm not with any of my friend a friend invite me to church i went to that church with a aim to see the god of christians if i come i will organize my boys to burn the church but when i went there since mommy i cannot pray as a muslim like the god of the christian has charmed me she shouted me allah forbid she showed her annoyance to me but she promised me that there is a solution to my problem she told my dad they start praying fasting asking other islam scholars to pray for me small small children they are praying for me and praying for my safe no solution they spend money no solution they went to different places no solution lastly they took me to a place i spent nine days in a room without seeing a sun outside for purification the water that i'm drinking they will write it on a slate in arab and wash it giving it to me the same water i took my bed with the same water the cook food that i am eating everything is from the quran that they are purifying me from the god of the christians the nine days that i'm coming out i shed a blood to allah because it fall at the red day islam has its own calendar that every even every odd number those are the days that allah demand for sacrifice it is written in the quran every face that seven Te, uh, 11 sorry 9 11 13 those days they are the days that Allah demand for sacrifice that is the reason why they equip their soldiers as a Boko Haram in Borno state just they have uh, Sudanias Sokoto they have Al-Shabaab uh, Bauchi 
they have Shabab, different kind of name, but with the same mission. They are the ones that are sacrificing for their God. When I do that sacrifice, I rub the blood in my body. I did ablution. I stand for prayers confidently. I will pray as a Muslim. No. I start saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody give up. If I will go on that alwa, we call it alwa in Islam. If I will go on alwa, nine days, the ten days, I cannot pray as a Muslim. That means the hope is not there for me to come back to that religion. My mom was tired of me. My dad was tired of me. Everybody was tired of me in the family. Then my mom asked me to go and meet the pastor that laid his hand on me and tell him to tell his God to release me. I went to his house in the morning. I stand before him. I sound so rude to him. Pastor, is it whatever you call yourself? Tell your God to release me. Is it a crime or a sin that someone will invite me to church without you telling your God to charm me? Please tell your God to, to release me or else you will regret it. I will come and burn this church, kill your family and kill you. If you don't know who am I, I open my body to him. I show all manner of weapons, a mark for identification. I taught him, I'm a disciple of Muhammad Yusuf one of the Boko Haram, I'm their Amir. So tell your God to release me or else he will regret that. The pastor didn't offer a word to me. He's looking at me like someone that is out of his sense. I just left. I come this, when I taught my mom, she said, sure, if that is not the way you approach him. Humble yourself before him. I decide to do according to the way she taught me. The following day, I went to him. I go on my knees. I say, Baba, please, Tell your God to release me. In my clan, we have no Christian. In my family, no Christian. And I don't want to be the first person to be a Christian in my family, please. They will kill me. I don't need it, please. Tell your God. He asked me to sit and I said, no, you know I cannot sit with you. But please tell your God, this is what I tell you. I just left. I tell my mom, like she has no interest on the deal on the discussion again on 28 I went out in the morning I took all the drugs that I can take to take me out of my sense because there is nothing give me joy anymore I cannot pray as a Muslim I cannot go back to have that boldness and start fighting jihad then what, what for what am I living for I took those drugs I come to the room I slept. Those are the only things that are giving me joy and peace of mind. When I slept, the following day is 29 January. That morning, I took a decision. I tell myself, if I go to that pastor, if I didn't got a solution to my problem, I will kill the pastor or I will kill the lady and kill myself that everybody will know that I committed jihad for myself. Then me to allow someone to come and kill me. Let me kill myself. And the Quran says, when you kill yourself in a way that you see the Christians, they overshadow you. Immediately when you open your eyes, you open your eyes in the paradise of Allah with seven virgins at your side, with angel. So when I listen to all those words, they start coming into my memory. I say, well, let me go and enjoy with Prophet Muhammad in the paradise of Allah. I make that decision. I just went into the room, into the house. Mommy, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Say, Mommy, I'm going now to meet the pastor. I believe if I didn't get the solution to my problem, you will not see me anymore. She says, Shwaib, don't try anything stupid. I have already said my mind. I left. I called the lady. Elizabeth, where are you? She told me she is in the church. I said, you are in the church again? She said, yes. I asked her, when the program will finish? She said, the program will finish by 6. And I told her that I would be at the church premises waiting for her. When she came out, she is smiling. I born. Shwaib, what is going on? I narrate some part of the story to her. I tell her to excuse her pastor for me. 
I have already put my plans on crown. When she went, she excused the pastor. The pastor is sitting with some people. When the pastor was coming, he's smiling. I put my head down. He asked us to come into his parlor. I said in my, in my mind, Alhamdulillah, this is what I want. So when we go to the parlor, I put my hand. I'm thinking of whom will I start among the two. Then the pastor says, Shwai, let's excuse this lady to go and assist her parent at home. I will attend to you. Immediately when she left, the pastor says, Shwai, before you come, the Spirit of God ministered to me that you and your parent went to different places to seek for a solution to your problem. When there is no solution, you decide to come to me. And before you come, you took a decision that today if you didn't receive the solution to your problem, something funny will happen. I assure you, you will receive your solution today and nothing will happen with you. I just feel weak. And I asked him, who tell you that we went for a different places for solution? He says the Holy Spirit. I say, where is the Holy Spirit? He didn't say anything. Say, your own is just, you don't want to be a Christian. I say, yes. Say, Shwai, let me pray to my God. My God will release you. He just went. He took a Bible and opened the Bible. I'm seeing him. When he read the Bible, he cover it. He go on his knees. He close his eyes. After some minutes, he starts saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I look at him. See, this man is in the dream. Because those are the words I'm saying, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When he comes, he says, Shwaib, sit down. I sat down. He says, Shwaib, I communicate with my God. Before he release you, he gives me a message to you. The message is, there is no way you will go here on earth to get a solution to your problem. Except the man that arrested you. No one but Jesus. And he is the only solution to this problem. Shwaib, you don't need to slide around, sacrifice anything, give money. It's just to open your heart and accept him to be your Lord and Savior. If you are ready, this is the only solution to your problem. Repeat it after me. Lord Jesus, I welcome you into my heart. I accept you to be my Lord and Savior. I start confessing. When he's saying, I'm saying it. After I finish saying it, I start hearing some strange voice. Shwaib, killing human being is a sin. Shwaib, Turning husband and wife to widow is a sin. Shwaib, turning children to fatherless, motherless is a sin. I'm confused. Burning people's houses is a sin. I don't know where am I. I'm confused. Then, the pastor was telling me to confess my sin. I said no. Because I'm seeing like I'm nakedness standing before the pastor. My eyes are open to all what I'm doing is a sin. It's there that I know killing human beings is a sin. Burning houses is a sin. Burning Christians is a sin. Doing all manner of things is a sin. I'm confused. I say, Pastor, if I confess my sin, your God will not forgive me. Say, Shwai, my God is a merciful God. There is no amount of sin you will commit that when you come to him that he will not forgive. I say, Pastor, if your God will forgive me, you will not forgive me. Say, Shwai, who am I when God set you free for me to caution? I start confessing. Brethren, that is where I feel the pains of my confession. When I'm confessing it, I'm weeping. I'm confessing, I'm weeping. After I finish, like my head was turning, I don't know what made me to fall down. I fall down. After some times when I stood up, I feel like it's not the shaivu that I know. I stand up as a new creature. All the burden in my heart, I'm no more experiencing it. I feel a joy in my heart. The pastor just embraced me. Say, Shwaib, congratulations. I say for what? Say, Shwaib, do you know how heaven are rejoicing because of you this night? I say, I don't know. He says, Shwaib, there is a big celebration in heaven tonight. I didn't offer a word. He said, congratulations. Shwaib, you are a new creature. You are a brand new man. All things that you did are passed away. He sing this song to me. The song say, I'm new creature. I'm brand new man. All 
Hallelujah. I don't know if you, you are a new creature. As for me, I'm a new creature. I'm a brand new man. All my past are passed away. I say, Pastor, it's not to be a Christian is the problem. If I go back home now, what will I tell my parents? Say, Shwai, you don't need to struggle for a word to your parents. God will control your parents for your favor. A word that you will tell your parent, he will put it in your mouth. I say, if your God will do that, I will be happy. He say he will do it. Say, Shai, what is this in your body? I say, they are my chance. They are my protection. He say, Shai, you don't need it anymore. I say, why? Say, there is someone in you. And the Bible says, greater is he that in you than the one in the world. The one you put in your hand, they are for the world until something happened before they function but the one in you will not allow anything to happen he will fight your fight even without your knowledge shall i bring it out let's burn it i remove the chance the pastor burn it in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit brethren there is joy in the lord there is joy in the lord i feel it i taste it the following day, I went to my parents' home with a boldness. When I go to the house, as I'm stepping to my room, I saw my dad lock it with the padlock of the moss. I went to my mom's room straight. Salamu alaikum. Say, Shwaib, you will not kill me. Where have you been? I said, Mommy, you asked me to go and meet the pastor. And I went. I'm just coming from the pastor. And I got the solution to my problem. She said, how did it happen? I told her that the pastor told me that it's Jesus Christ that arrested me. And the only solution is the same Jesus. It's just to accept him without any sacrifice or for paying any penny. She said, may Allah forbid my last born to be a pagan. I said, mommy is not a pagan, it's Christian. My mom cried. She shed the tears. She said, wife, did you want to die? I didn't say a word. My dad just came into the room. Say, Shwaib, are you out of the sense? I said, Daddy, I'm speaking in a sense. Say, Shwaib, did you want to die? I said, Daddy, it will please me if you will be the one to kill me. Say, Shwaib, I will not kill you, but I will send your friend after you. If they didn't, I will send your brothers to kill you. If they didn't, I will be the last one. Shwaib, I disown you. I count you out of my inheritance. Before I came from my room, I don't want to see you in my house. I turn around, I saw my beloved mom. She's weeping. But it's not Shaibu that is standing before her. It's something different. Then the voice told me, Shaib, leave. That is not where you are belong. She said, Shaib, are you going? I didn't offer a word. I start moving out. On 30th January 2010, by quarter to eight, I leave my father's house with a mind of going to meet the pastor. But I decided to go and meet a friend that is Christian, calling Simon by name. And the Quran says, if you kill your best friend, there is a special reward waiting for you. When I realized that I'm hunting Simon to kill him, even him, he know that I'm after him. But it's just that God didn't allow it to happen. When Simon saw me, he started trembling. Shai, please don't kill me. I said, Simon, that is not the reason I'm here. He said, Shai, I know. And I said, yes, Simon, I know that you know I'm after you. But that is not the reason. Simon, that is not the reason. Then I called the pastor. I said, your pastor wants to speak to you. When the pastor talked to him, Simon agreed to accommodate me. I saw a love of Christ in that family. 
someone that knows you are after his life. He treats you like his blood brother. To the extent that we are sharing cloth with Simon, that I didn't deserve it. I didn't. But Simon showed me that love. I narrated this story to him. He prayed with me. I spent four days in his house. Three days. The four days in the morning, my dad sent my friends to come and kill me. We are sleeping with Simon. We just had a knock. Like they want to remove the door. When we peeped through the window, I saw they are my colleagues. With all manner of weapons in their body. Simon starts to ensure if they come to kill us. I say, Simon, they are not after anyone in this house. It's me. My dad sent them to come and kill me. I just, I don't know what took me. I just went out. I have already give up. I will not make it. My friends will kill me. My chance is not there. I forgot what the pastor told me that there is someone in me who will protect me. I forgot that. When I step out, my friends are looking at me. They are looking into my face. None of them offer a word to me. They just turn their, their head and turn their back. They left. When I come inside, hallelujah. When I come inside, I say, Simon, your God has saved me. He said, indeed. The Bible says once again, greater is he that in you than the one in the world. The one in the world have no access to your life. That's why they came. They cannot see you. They are seeing the one in you and it's greater than them that they can't stand before him. I call the pastor. The pastor says, I tell Simon to open Psalm 23 for you. When Simon read verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I feel fulfilled. I said, if God himself would be my shepherd, who would be against me? They come the second time. When they come, one of them was asking me, Shribe, which Baba did you go to him and receive your power? And I told them that I didn't go to any Baba. It's the God of the Christian that protecting me. Because at that moment, I don't know him with any name. Hallelujah. I don't know him with any name. It's only the God of Christian that I know. That's why I keep on calling him the God of Christian. God is faithful to me. Brethren, I saw the mercy of God in my life. It's a pleasure once again for someone to be in Christ. I'm together with Simon. The pastor was thinking of relocating me. A friend just called me, Swipe, we saw your name. They placed it in the school. You are going to serve in Ondo. The call up has come out and your name is there. Say, my name, yes. I don't even know whether I graduate. I didn't graduate from university because all my commitments in my religion, most of the exams that I wrote, I would just sit down and write attendance, put the court number and submit it. I left. If I come to the lecturer, we will gank ourselves like 15 or 20 with arms in our body. We put all these uh, uh, jalabia, Arab attires. We hide the gun inside. When we come to this office, we greet him. Good morning, sir. Uh -huh, how can I help you? No, we are the one to help you. It's not you to help us. He say, what is that? All of us will raise it. When he see gone, he will come into his senses. I say, sir, I wrote your exam. This is my court number. And this is the exam that I wrote. If you fail me, you fail yourself. That is the end of the story. And they will pass me. All of the lecturers, I can say, they know who am I. When they told me that I graduate, I can't believe it. I, don't, I didn't collect a clearance in the school. How will I go and collect my result? When I went into the school with Simon, I saw my name, Shwaib Ondo. I just shake my head. I say, God, I don't know anyone in Ondo. How will I cook? And I didn't collect my result. Simon asked me to go with him. We just went to the exam and record. When the man saw me, he stood up, he greeted us, we answered, how can I help? I said, sir, I come to collect my result. When did you graduate? I said, I don't know. Since 2002, I'm in the university. 
I went there 2010. So tell me, how will I know I graduate or I didn't? If I know I graduate, I will be there since and collect my result. He starts searching department. He search it. He just removed my result. Swipe congratulations. I say thank you. It's like he's praying we should leave his office. He didn't ask me where is your clearance. Where, he didn't say anything. I just left. I can imagine. I said, Simon, it's your God. It's not about me. I took it. I collected my call up. When I called the pastor, I told him this is what happened. He said, that is God. It's God that relocates you. It's not anyone. I said, Daddy, I want to go and make a peace with my mom before I commence my journey tomorrow. He said, it's good. Let me pray for you. He prayed with me. The following morning, I went to my parents' house. I saw my dad sitting outside with his friends. I greet them. None of them opened his mouth and answer, neither to raise from. I just went straight to my mom. When she saw me, she stood up. She embraced me. She said, wife, I miss you. I said, mommy, I miss you. Hope there is no problem. I said, no problem. Sit down. When she sat down, I go on my knee according to my tradition. I said, mommy, the reason why I'm here is to ask you to forgive me. I know you are not happy with me ever since what happened. But I want you to know it's not my wish things to happen with me in this way. But this is how God destined my life. Please, mommy, forgive me. She says, sure, if I'm your mother, I understand it's not you. What I would tell you is to be faithful to this religion and stay away from bad friends. I look into her eyes. She still repeated, be faithful. I shake my head. When I stood up, she removed a white hair on her head. She put on my head, said, my son, you will not die young. You will live. Whatever you desire, your God will grant you a need for that. My mom prayed for me. She gave me some amount of money. I asked her to collect a key to me from my dad. She said, ever since this incident happened, they are not even greeting with my dad, neither to go and approach him, because my dad told her that she is the secret behind what happened with me. I went out, Daddy, I want you to give me a key to my room. I want to pick my belongings. He didn't offer a word. I talked three times, he didn't. I just went ahead. I look at the door. I break it. I go inside. I pick all what I want to pick in the room. I left without saying a word to him. I turned my back against the house. I left. When I come, I meet a store with some of the church members. They issue, they offer a assistance to me. They pray for me. They took me to the terminals. I left when I came to Ondo. I enjoyed my first week in the camp. My, I'm communicating with my mom, with some of the church members, with Simon and his family. They are the new family that I met. The second week, my mom called me. Shwaib, I credit your account. I appreciate her. Shwaib, I'm hospitalized. Can you pray for me? And I don't know a word to pray for for sick person. It's only when I will eat, I will pray. If I will sleep, I know those ones. But to pray for sick person, I don't know. I just told her that, Mommy, believe that my God will heal you. She laughed, not knowing that that is the last time I will heard from her. That is the last laugh I will feel from my beloved mom. My mom died the following day in hospital. When she died, they buried her according to the doctrine of Islam. They didn't allow me to set my eyes for the life stamp on her. My dad called me three days after her date because I tried her number, it's not going. I called their number, they are rejecting my call. Say, Shwaib, you are happy now your mom died on Wednesday. We bury her according to the doctrine of Islam. Today is the three days prayer. We don't need you and we don't want you to come. He switched off his phone. I don't know where am I. That is the first time in life that I feel the pain of death in my life. I start imagining people that I wasted. How did their people feel? People that we born, how will their people feel? Those that are alive, how will they feel? Brethren, that is my first experience of death in my life. I wept. 
they took me to the camp director. He called my dad. My dad told me, told him that I'm the secret behind my mom's date. I told him that is not the truth. I narrated the story to him. He is convinced what I'm telling him is true. He introduced me to Nigerian Christian Corpus Fellowship President. That president, he introduced some of the escorts to come and pray with me, teaching me some things. Then I asked one of them, please, can you teach me how to pray in Christian way? Say, Shwai, in Christianity, we don't teach how to pray. But we have a great teacher that we teach us. That is the Holy Spirit. Just as you are talking to me, talk to him. He's listening to you. Invite him. Tell him what you want. He will do it for you. And in fact, Holy Spirit is everly faithful. And he teach me how to pray. Brethren, the challenge didn't end. When, I, when we pass out, they post us to our place of primary assignment. Everybody. Daddy, I'm in so, 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 so place. Mommy, I'm in so, 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 so place. No one to call. No one to call me. No one to call. I start this stop. I say, God, this is the reason why you bring me to Christianity. You take my mommy from me. And no one will call me. Why did you do that? Then the voice says, Shwai, who are you to ask that question? And I seek for forgiveness. All the burden in me is to witness the last respect that they will give to my mom. I meet one of my friends. I say, Willie, if I'm serving a living God, I will travel home to witness the 40 days respect of my mom. I say, Shwaib, pray and ask him. He will grant you. After that thought, within a 30 minutes, my dad called me. Salam alaikum, wa alaikum salam. Shwai, prepare next week. It's the last respect of your mom. We will going to share her will. We want you to be there. He off the phone. I just busted into tears. I say, indeed, my God is a God that hears. It's a God that sees. It's not a God that doesn't have eyes, neither ear to hear. I feel it and I appreciate that. Before I go, I meet my pastor. I taught him. He said, Shwai, go into one week prayer and fasting. You will come and break it in my house. We pray together. And I did the way he taught me. He said, Shwai, when you step to your father's house, whatever they give you to eat, call the name of Jesus to that. And I do. When I go to home, they wake up me. We have a nice time with my sisters. They bring food for me. I close my eyes. I blaze the food before I ate it. That night, I become a stranger in that house. Everyone was looking at me as a someone different. They give me a key to my room. I fix the room. I lie down. By quarter to two or two in the morning, my dad sent my brothers to come and wake me up that he wants to have a word with me. When I see the way they come in, I know, yes, it has already happened but I have someone that is there for me. When they took me, I went. I greet him. He said, Shwaib, you are welcome. I said, thank you, sir. It's not that we don't want to invite you or to witness your mom burial because you are a pagan. That is the reason. And his haram, his, uh, his abomination in the, in, the, in the doctrine of Islam that Christian will witness the burial of a Muslim because you are a pagan and you see what he caused for yourself. And your mom asks us to forgive you before she died. And we promise her that until you come back to Islam, before we forgive you. Now you can use this opportunity and come back to your religion. Pray for your mom that her soul will rest in peace. I say, Daddy, I'm a Christian. I cannot pray as a Muslim. My dad slapped me. My brothers beat me thoroughly that morning. They pushed me out of the room like a dog. I wept. When I got to my room, I'm crying. I start singing praises. I opened Psalms that morning. I read it. That is where I'm comforted. But I tell God, let him do something in my family. That they would know that serving a living God. After I said that prayer, I forgot it. The following morning, my brother come with a cloth full of blood that I should put it in my body to go and attend the occasion. Immediately when I saw it, 
the word came to me, Shwaib, don't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And because I know what they did, and I know the consequences, so I should not try it. And I didn't. I put the one that I, I came with. When my dad saw me, he felt bad. He embraced me in the mix of the people. And I left that gathering. I sat down under a tree and weeping. My mother's brother came to me. They said, Shwaib, we understand. And our sister tell us what you are passing through. It's just that your dad didn't understand. To call the story short, the elders and the Islam scholars, they called my dad. They told him that he's a leader. Let him set an example in committing a jihad against me. As long as I brought my safe, let them not allow me to go alive. If they didn't, they will ask people not to pray in his mosque. And many people are not praying in the mosque. They stop because one of his sons is a pagan and he didn't commence a jihad against him. And the Quran says anyone that denied the faith of Islam at that point kill that person. If you allow the person to step out of that place, he will expose the secret behind Islam. That is the reason anywhere you see a Muslim convert, his life was on danger. They are haunting him like a white animal. My dad took it on him. He came home and called a family meeting. All of them are together. He told them, he come with two ideas. We then, make, we then turn my head to run into a madness, picking a nylon on the street, or they should silence me through poison. And the family says they don't want to see their brother being a mad on the street. It's better they silence him through the poison to fulfill the mandate of Allah. And the discussion has ended. They prepare their, their poison. I'm in a room. My sister come with a foot. She drop it. She's weeping. I look into her face. I ask myself, is it because I'm a Christian you are feeling for me? Zara, what is going on? She didn't say a word. Talk to me. She didn't offer a word. She shake her head. She went out. I take the food. I appreciate God. I ask him to bless it and sanctify it. And he do according to the way I ask. I ate it. Immediately I finish eating, my brother ran into the room. Shwaib, hope there is no problem. I told him there is no problem. He just went out. <laughs> they took the plate. They bring food to me again. The same thing. She will be crying. I ask her. She will not tell me what is going on. And I don't know. Immediately my brother will come. Shwaib, any problem? No problem. There is a cat in the house. To try whether the poison is a fake one. As they give him immediately at that point, the cat stretch up and die. They mix it, they brought it. Brethren, our words, they are life and spirit. Except we don't know how to handle it. <laughs> Hallelujah. I speak to the food. I blaze it and I sanctify it. And it was sanctified by that name. I ate it. A day that I will live. My sister ran into the room, she locked the door. I said, what is going on? I start thinking maybe they come to kill me again. I say, Shwaib, I want to share a word with you. Please, can you forgive us if I tell you? I say, who am I not to forgive if God will forgive me? I say, Shwaib, you will not forgive. Promise me. I promise her. So ever since dad asks you to pray, you refuse. We are giving you poison. We decide in the house that we don't want you to run mad. It's better you die through poison. That is the reason, and this is what we are doing. If I come, you will see me weeping, you will ask me, I will not say a word. I'm feeling a pain that I will not see you anymore. Immediately, I feel it. But the Spirit says, sure, greater is he that in you than the one in the world. Hallelujah. My sister asked me to pray for her. We go on our knee, I pray for her. I feel fulfilled. My family know that I'm serving a living God. It's not a dead God. But they are feeling a shame of denying the deadly, blood-soaking God that they are worshipping. The God has tied them. The Spirit of Allah is a very powerful spirit. 
No wonder the Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this world, and the spiritual wickedness in the hiding place. They are the spiritual wickedness in the hiding place. Brethren, Christianity, Christianity, that is the truth. These are the truth. They are uncomparable. This is life and this is death. It's left for us to choose. How did we serve God? You show me thy mercies, Lord, even when I'm weak. You show me thy mercies, Lord, when I'm in distress. My soul in pit of hell, you came to rescue. You make me to stand in a highest place. You show me thy message, Lord, even when I'm weak. Show me thy message, Lord, when I'm in 